So in this video, we're going to paint some lovely delphiniums using gradients. And what do I mean by gradients in watercolor? It's essentially moving from dark to light values. And when you use the wet into wet technique and drop in darker color, you can create a gradient of intense, rich color. And as it fades into that pre-wet area, it becomes lighter in value and you get this gradual transition from dark to light. So let's get started. You'll see in a lot of my floral paintings, I like to incorporate areas of dark value and light value and these soft gradients. And I'll show you how I get those results in this demonstration. So the painting usually comes together with a few layers. And I first start with a very light color. So in order to get light colors and watercolor, we have to add water to the paint to get a very light value. So I've got some cobalt blue. Sometimes you gotta work your paint when it's dry. You gotta kinda get in there in order to get the paint moving and workable. So I've got this bluish purple color going. And the reason why I like using these ceramic palettes is because when I swirl my colors like this, I can see my puddle clearly. Sometimes when I work on plastic palettes, the plastic is almost so super smooth like glass that it just beads up and I can't even tell what my color is going to look like on my paper. So these palettes are on Amazon. If you go to my website and download my supply list, you'll be able to see the colors and the items that I use. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to start by just making some simple circular shapes. Now I want it to be a bit more watery than that. So I'm gonna go into my water and just grab a bit more. And I like to start very loose. So I'm just doing these sort of C shapes. Fuller at the bottom as I go up, it's a little bit looser and just tiny little dots. Rinse off my brush. And then now it's got a bit of water on there. I'm gonna remove some excess on my towel and then I'm gonna come over here onto the side. And in some areas, I'm gonna pull out that color just a little to soften some of those edges. There we go. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna take another brush, or you can use the same one, but I like this one because it comes to a nice fine point. Now we're gonna get some darker value in there. So make a little puddle on your paper. Oh, that's too purpley. I want it to be more blue. There, that's a nice value. I like that. Now let's drop some in right here where you think there could be a center of a flower. You can watch how it just fades out a little bit. You can even make some little brush marks, give it some definition. Rinse my brush. Now I'm gonna add, let's put a purple delphinium right here. So we can do the same thing using a number eight round. And I'm gonna start with a light value again, but instead of more blue, I'm gonna have it lean more purple just for fun. So there we go. It's kind of a medium light value. It'll work. Let's just, and another thing I like to do is see how my purple's touching that blue. I like how the colors sort of blend together a little bit in some areas. And I'm leaving some gaps of white paper. I'm gonna rinse my brush, remove some of that color, dab off some of the water, and I want the top, I'm gonna pull out that color on top make it a little bit lighter and then go up a few little dots on top now let's drop in color it's still damp there's still time you got to do this fairly quickly before it dries now get a darker value and drop it in to the center of some of those little flowers you can go up maybe 
I'll put some on the sides. And you'll start to see those gradients, those soft gradients forming. That's the magic of watercolor. You can keep touching it in and it'll get darker and darker and spread even more. A watercolor paint is made with dispersants, which helps it spread and fade when using the wet into wet techniques. There. Now we could put another blue one here, but I'm thinking of trying out a different color. Maybe sort of a, a reddish purple would be pretty. So I'm gonna use some alizarin crimson. I'm gonna remove some of this color on my palette. Now I'm not the cleanest artist you can see here in my palettes. I often go back in and double dip in other colors, but I use the same colors all the time. So, and a fairly limited palette, so it doesn't look too bad on my paper, although it looks bad here. So here's that alizarin crimson. And let's add a bit of purple. There we go, I like that color. Now let's lighten it, adding some more water. Now typically I'd have some clear water, but I'm too lazy to go get another cup and this will work. So here's my light value of alizarin crimson. And again, I'm just going right next to that delphinium. It's wider at the base. And as you go up, it gets smaller and smaller little flowers. Kind of, there we go. I'm rinsing my brush removing the excess paint, and I'm gonna fade some of those areas, soften some of those areas, I should say. I don't want them all to be hard edged. A hard edge is just where your paint meets your dry paper, it's nice and crisp. So I softened some of those edges so they weren't all super crisp. There, and it's starting to dry quickly. So let's drop in some dark value again Grab some paint, purple and alizarin crimson, a little bit darker. There we go. If there's too much water, it'll spread too far. So let's just drop in some of that dark paint, close up that flower a little bit. There we go. And as I drop it in, it's just spreading. It's just mesmerizing to do this add some dark value down here just let it do its thing and everything is still slightly damp so what I'm gonna do next is start on my stems you can wait till it's completely dry but sometimes I like the look of my green stems sort of bleeding into my flower shapes and then for my stems I'm gonna start at the bottom and delphinium stems are, they're fairly straight up and down. And then as you move up the flower, you've got these smaller, skinnier stems and these tiny little buds at the top. So we're gonna be doing that in this piece here. So let's start over on this side and start at the bottom and kind of go up. And I don't draw straight through my flower. I, I break it up, so I might paint a little bit there, come up here, and it, it branches out the higher you go. So I add these smaller little, boop, tiny little hash marks, sometimes little dots. And then there's like little leaves that sort of stick out like that. And you can use your brush and just make little quick strokes. Then let's do this purple one. So I'm gonna go up and I, I vary my brush stroke by putting pressure down and then releasing. And let's move up through this piece here. Just little quick marks. 
I'm not taking it too seriously. I'm just giving the impression of movement by making little marks. So this one I'm just quickly pushing my brush down and releasing. Let's do the same thing for this reddish purple one. There. Go up and skip over some flowers. And at the very top, I like to do these smaller little marks that signify where those little buds are. And we can let this dry and go over it with another layer of paint, or we can let it be and see if we like it. So let's check it out. Okay, so now that we've gotten this far with our painting, you can have a look at it, see if it's dried completely. I use a hair dryer sometimes. Another way to tell if it's dry is you can hold the back of your finger up to your painting and if it feels cool to the touch compared to the dry paper nearby, then it's probably not dry yet, so you'll need to give it some more time. But in this case, all I'm gonna do is add some tiny little dark centers of the flower using some very dark paint. So, ooh, that's too dark. That's almost straight from the tube. Let's grab some blue and mix it with that purple here we go. So I've got a nice dark value, my cobalt blue and Windsor violet, and all I'm gonna do is just touch in a center here, maybe one there, one here, just give some definition. Let's do the same thing for this purple one. Grab some dark violet, put it center there, here. If you want, you can take a thirsty brush. It's just a brush that has some water on it and then you remove that excess with a paper towel and you just sort of fade out some of those darker spots. So it's similar to dropping in color, only first you put down the color and then you sort of fade it out. And let's just add a couple little darker layers on top of this rose-colored delphinium. There, that's all. Just some tiny little accents is all it needs. And now I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll have a look at our piece. 